Florida A&M. What are they made of here in tournament time? Playing what feels like a road game. Yurtical needs some help. Gives it up top. Now Bernie Robinson, baseline set, catch and shoot and score. Nice soft touch by Robinson in the pinch post. And that's another soft spot of the zone you need to look to put the ball. Nicely done. Robinson and Tanner presents an interesting matchup in the paint, but right now a mismatch. Swinson is open. That hurts the Rattlers. Big three for Swinson. Terrific ball movement and spacing against the zone. It's an inside-outside look for Norfolk State. Two shots coming after a hard foul. Let's take a look at the spacing on offense. You see the ball getting reversed. You're gonna get a touch inside and that commits the defense. No one's there to contest the outside three. Great execution against the zone. Dominique Harper looks like she's really favoring that left elbow, trying to shake it out a little bit. While Jamella Smith stands at the free throw line, the junior from Chapel Hill puts it in. And I think she wins for longest hair of any player in the tournament, too. I think it's That hair close. is below her waistline. <laughs> it's pretty. <laughs> Beautiful and pulled back behind her head. Meanwhile, Harper checks out with that tender elbow. Strode and Swinson run the point here. We'll see who initiates the offense for Norfolk State. That little bit of pressure only gives Norfolk State about 21 seconds to operate against the zone. Nice backdoor look. Swinson can't avoid the outstretched arms of the 6-4 post. Possession alive, three to shoot it. Swinson off, balance, nowhere close. Nice defense there from FAMU. Yeah, Swinson had to lean away from Alicia McRae on that, who came out to contest the shot. You could see her body drifting in the air, trying to get a cleaner look. Phillips couldn't come back. Instead, Smith, an open three. Gabrielle Swinson with the rebound. Swinson coming off of a 14-point, 13-rebound effort. That's right, the 5'6'' junior was that active on the glass against Delaware State. Florida A&M comes back and gets a transition bucket. But look at Tanner sneaking her way up the floor and then she blows it off the left side of the backboard. You gotta be ready and maybe she needed one dribble to square herself up. Victoria Wind! Unbelievable effort! How did she pull that off? All right, take a look. Victoria Wynn playing with a tremendous amount of confidence, taking the bump and the finish. But I love the passion afterwards when she lands and knows it goes in. <laughs> That's what the game is all about. That's March Madness in a nutshell. Incredible work by our production crew. That was awesome. Victoria Wynn, I'll tell you what. Those are the kinds of plays you remember after the tournament's over. That's great stuff. Swinson throws it up top. Roberts to the right side. Phillips for three. String music for the Norfolk State Spartans. <laughs> the Splash Sister gets it done. From the left corner, Sweeting rolls to the weak side, and the rebound goes Hotly contested out of bounds. Norfolk State with a substitution. Swinson checks out, and it's Dominique Harper, who is apparently all good, back on. Now Phillips tickling the nets right here on a three. Boom. Bottoms. Splash sister. Norfolk State. They've done a terrific job of moving the ball. They're 50% from three. Three of six this afternoon. Alexis Long. A player control foul. She went barreling into a FAMU defender. Alexis Long's brother, Alex, plays on the men's team at Norfolk State. And kind of a fun recruiting story. Larry Vickers, who is her head coach now, was an assistant for the men. He was in charge of recruiting her brother. 
and the Norfolk State women were recruiting Alexis. Well, mom handled Alexis's duties. Dad handled Alex's duties. And for the longest time, the two coaching staffs didn't know they were recruiting brother and sister together. Lob underneath. And it's a poorly executed reverse layup. Hard foul with the basketball coming our direction. <laughs> Equipment okay. Uh, and we're fine, <laughs> which is great. You know, kind of funny to <laughs> hear Larry Vickers talk about that story. He goes, I specifically was in charge of recruiting Alex. He goes, I had no idea that we were also recruiting her sister. Yeah, that's fun stuff. The basketball world is very small. All right, final six seconds of the half. Norfolk State by seven, but a chance to extend that lead. And it's good from the free throw line. Harper connects on that one. Senior from Winton Woods High School in Cincinnati, Ohio. One of two. Timeout, Florida A&M. A look at Robin Fralick, the head coach of the number one team in the country in Ashland, Ohio. It's only her second year as a head coach, but she was an assistant on the staff for a couple of years. How about this, her first game as the head coach, they beat a Division I opponent. They beat Bowling Green. She is 65 and two in two years. You want to talk about an immediate impact on a program, look no further than Robin Fralick. Skip pass across the top of the zone. This is Johnson zinging it up top. Stempert feeds baseline, it goes back to Johnson. Up and under, two more for Julie Worley, and it's 10 to nine, Ashland. Yeah, again, some really nice passing to get the forwards for Ashland involved, and, and they have done a great job of converting. Jody Johnson, who just turned her back to us here uh, courtside, appears to have uh, some piece of cloth tucked inside one of her nostrils. Wonder if she was dealing with a bloody nose after that last fall. A foul before the break. Jeez. Yeah, in fact, I think the officials warned uh, Sasha Watson to, to be a little more careful with the flying elbows, and I believe that's why we had a little bit of a bloody nose. Stays with the Lady Bucks. We had mentioned the Doherty family before, and mom is Caroline Doherty Mast, arguably Ohio University's one of their best, as she has a jersey hanging in the Convocation Center, all-time career-leading scorer for the Bobcats. So between mom playing basketball down in Athens, Ohio, and with what Carrie Pickens did for the, uh, for the Eagles before she went and played professionally in Australia for a little while, now she's back here coaching. And then, of course, obviously, what Andy Doherty is doing is a two-time All-American. <laughs> Ashland's got a good thing going. Well, every time Ashland shoots a big shot, we don't even need to say anything because you can hear and see this crowd go bananas. A steal near midcourt. Henning gives it baseline. Maddie Dakin offline, but the offensive rebound from Snyder. Good footwork, and it turns into two points. Ah, she had a three-pronged move there, and it finally got the Wex. West Texas defender off her feet. Really great patience. Nice little run here. Seven unanswered points by Ashland out of that last timeout. Junior Sidney Walton gives it over to Madison Parker. Walton redirects it now. Vander Zee off the mark. Good fake into the corner and the shot clock went off. Stats will tell us that Ashland has trailed in only 4% of its minutes that played this year. They have trailed only 4% of their minutes. It's incredible how they have not only had leads but run away with them all season long. Nobody has had a bigger scoring margin in the country, more than 30 points per game on average. And consistently scoring 80 points with the exception of the regional final this year. And a Snyder for two. Now they're doing a really good job of ball reversal and, and getting the opposite block open. Snyder feeds it forward and Andy Doherty with yet another basket. 
Timeout, Lady Buffs, and this place has gone purple and gold crazy.